Uh, but Google Web Toolkit is also something that you install onto your hard drive, um, since it's like a whole like IDE and compiler and stuff like that. Uh, so because of that, uh, we can't install it onto these computers, but you're welcome to install it onto your own laptop. Like, I have it on my laptop, which apparently is not compatible with the whole uh, adapters here, but that's okay. Okay, so first we start with like why Google Web Toolkit exists. So you guys, we're, a lot of you guys are actually here for the JavaScript days, so raise your hand if you're here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Any of those days? One of those things, yeah. Right, exactly. So you guys are doing a lot with JavaScript. As some of you notice, there are a couple of weird things about JavaScript. Um, like any of you that played with asynchronous functions or you played with the object literals and the maps API, uh, all this strange way that we do namespaces. And then just stuff that's like browser dependent as well. If any of you guys have ever tried to write something that works equally well and looks the same on IE6, Safari, and Firefox, then you know that JavaScript and web technologies, it's kind of hard to write um, for all browsers, for all users, right? Because you have users that use their mouse, you have users that use their keyboard, you have users that really like their back button, and users that don't care at all, right? So that's a problem, right? Is that whenever you're like developing like websites, is that you spend a lot of your time, first of all, deciding like, okay, how should I develop the website, right? Do I do, like, if I'm doing something that's like graphics intensive, do I do SVG, which is Kind of just Firefox, I think Safari now as well. Um, do I do Canvas, which is uh, also only some browsers? Do I do Flash, which you need a plugin for? Um, how do I do communication with the server, right? Uh, JSONP, which we've talked about, but then all the other ones as well. Um, you know, the JavaScript, which things are supported in which browsers? Uh, the CSS as well, CSS keeps changing, and <laughs> CSS is probably the worst part about web development, right? At least from my point of view. If I ever become a CSS ninja, I think I can like die happy about it. Uh, and then we have all these different types of HTML uh, types as well. So it's not easy, right? Because um, it's kind of sad because a lot of times, like, I usually say, like, okay, it takes you like one week to write the app and then two months to get it to work in all the browsers, right? <laughs> like, we still, like, we redesigned code.google.com earlier this summer and we're still dealing with like slight IE6 issues. And we heard that Microsoft was going to like push out IE six or IE seven like every single one of its users, and like everyone was like, "Oh my God, is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? Please, do we have to stop worrying about IE six? But then Microsoft decided like, "Oh, we're not going to be douches this time. We're only going to give it to like some people." Like, I mean, this one time just force it on people. Um, so anyway, right? So it's kind of annoying. So then there are a lot of like toolkits frameworks, right? Um, so there's like jQuery, Prototype, uh, Spectacular. What else? X, did, did Django, is that, that's a, is that JavaScript? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, I actually usually don't use any of them, but, um, so you can pick those, but then like, there's a bunch of them, right? So different, people write different widgets for different ones, and then you can try and mix them, and then every time you try and mix the framework with another one, you run into problems, because they all have different conventions, because uh, there's a lot of ways you can write a JavaScript framework, right? Um, so then you're like, all right, screw it, I'll just use Notepad. Uh, or BI, my personal favorite, and then uh, debugging Firebook. Firebook is amazing, though. So um, I'll probably do maybe a short workshop uh, during the program contest about debugging with JavaScript for those of you who are going to use the JavaScript APIs, because there's some definite ways um, that you can pimp Firefox out to help you debug. Um, but yeah, so in order to debug, we have to like install this you know third-party plugin that somebody wrote for Firefox, right? Debugging doesn't come native to web development. And then the other question is, well, I've never done JavaScript before, I'm a student, and so far I've only got C++ and Java experience, and I want to do web apps, so do you go and try and start learning JavaScript, um, which can be a little weird and scary at first, um, or do you find a way that appeals to your background right now? So Google Web Toolkit is for those people who want to create web apps that are like, you know, that work well across browsers and have all these hacks native in them to work but don't require an intense knowledge of JavaScript and being like a CSS ninja, because there are very few CSS ninjas out there. Um, so what is Google Web Toolkit? It's an open source Java software development framework that makes writing J Ajax applications easy. Basically, you write the applications in, in Java, um, and then 
In the IDE, you get them compiled, and then what you get output is you get like the HTML, you get all your resources, and then you get all these compressed JavaScript files um, that take care of all the UI and logic for you. Um, so since it's Java, so if you're already used to using Eclipse, you could use you could use it with Eclipse. Um, I personally use a program called Crimson Edit, which is basically like Notepad and syntax piloting. Um, but you know, it's up to you, right? Um, and then the debugging comes actually in their IDE. Um, so this is what happens, and then it focuses a lot since they like have this Java that then gets translated into JavaScript. They can look at your Java and be like, oh, okay, so you wanted a widget that's on the left-hand side and that flows a certain way. And so then they can be like, all right, we know exactly how to do them all different browsers, and they do it for you, right? So as long as you understand like the kind of things that you want, the kind of widgets and panels and setup that you want, so if you use the Java, you want a flow panel or something like that, they can actually. Uh, Gwit will actually write the cross-browser CSS and JavaScript to do that for you. And also, it uh, takes advantage of the fact that uh, Java is a strongly typed language as opposed to JavaScript. So, um, a lot of my problems in the past have been caused by um, by variables in, in, that I expect to be one thing in JavaScript are actually another. And it takes me a while to track it down, even even using Firebug. So, uh, Java Java's compiler, because it's strongly typed, can help you find that issue a lot faster before you even get to see your web app. Right. Um, so yeah, but you just, yeah, the compiler. But it's actually more than the compiler. Um, it offers a lot more stuff that makes like web apps into true apps. Stuff that you probably wouldn't bother with if you weren't if you weren't using Gwit because you'd be too busy just hacking away and trying to get your app to work across the different browsers. Uh, here's but here's so this is what it would look like, right? Um, this is really basic. This basically creates uh, a button uh, that says "click me." doesn't have very good indexing, so just imagine. Um, but then you see, like, this is, if you're used to, like, the mouse listeners in Java, mouse move listener, whatever, this looks like that, the click listener, defining the on-click method there, and then when they click, we do an alert, right? And then we add it, so our root panel is basically our this whole web page, and this is just adding this button to the root panel. Um, so you can imagine, like, if you've ever, if you've used to Java, if you're used to Swing, uh, a lot of the UI stuff will look really familiar. By the way, this is a complete uh, WIT application or a Google Web Toolkit app application. This uh, little snippet right here, it's very simple. It just has the one button, but it is complete. Right. Um, so what are the things that we can take advantage of? Uh, we have the Java IDE, or not, if you don't want it, right? So you can use TextFan. Um, you can also set up unit tests, and it has, that, it has things built in to make it easy to test. Because uh, that's the problem with web apps is, uh, a lot of them aren't tested, and then there's situations when they break. And so something that people are trying to start a lot now, and we're even doing this a lot with the Maps API now, is writing a lot more tests. So the more tests you have, hopefully the less things will break as um, people make changes like elsewhere in your application. Um, so they're actually really useful. I actually broke um, two tests two days ago in the Maps API. <laughs> And uh, and it was good because then I found out that there were parts like I only made it like a two line change in the code, but I found that it affected things that I didn't know about, and so I was able to look them up and make the change, etc. So unit testing is really great, especially on a big project, right? Different people contributing different places don't know what's going to affect what. Um, so you can like build different widgets and then reuse them in different projects, right? And it's you know it's Java, so it's object oriented. So if that's something that you like. Basically, like your code is going to look uh, a lot cleaner inherently. If you've ever looked at JavaScript code, like looked at people's sites, a lot of the code doesn't look very nice. I mean, you can make really good looking JavaScript code, um, but a lot of people don't. Um, a lot of people kind of just hack that together, right? So this is Java code, so inherently in order to get it to compile, it's usually going to look pretty good. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a lot easier to follow. And then you've got Java Docs, so instant documentation and comments um, and compile time errors since it does involve a compiler. Um, so what it has is that it just has this hosted browser that uh, once you make changes to your app, you can just save your app. Basically, you press reload on the browser. It'll go and look at your new uh, Java files, compile it, create the, the output code, and then show you the changes. Um, so it's pretty much as fast as making the changes to like an HTML file and refreshing the page with a slight, there's a slight delay just for doing the compiling. 
But if you take advantage, if you if you think about it in the, in the way that whatever you're creating is going to be browser compliant, you don't have to test it three separate times right. or four separate times. You test it once, then that more than makes up this. Yeah, yeah, because you get used to uh, <laughs> you get used to having like four different browser windows up on your screen because you're like, okay, let's load this in Firefox, let's load it in Safari, let's load it in Opera. Um, and you load it in IE. And, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, you leave IE to the last because you're like, please, 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 just work. Um, and so the other thing with is it's all about like you know appealing, making sure that you're making apps that are usable, right? So it has all these built-in widgets. Um, that are that provide like really good UI for the user, and uh, it also does things like supporting like history. So the back button. So this slide used to have examples of pages that would say like do not press the back button, do not press the back button, right? You'll cause absolute chaos and lose everything. So a big thing about Ajax apps is a lot of them use it, lose the back button, but you don't have to. There's simple ways that you can just add the back button back in. And so basically in here you can just assign like, okay, this thing I want to be, I want you to listen to the activity on this widget and when this action occurs, remember that with the back button, right? So it becomes really easy to add in history. Um, the other thing is supporting both mouse and keyboard use um, and doing it really easily. Um, making it easy, so making it better so when font resize is a big thing, like whenever I'm web developing, I always do control plus on the keyboard to see what my web page looks like when the font is increased. Because sometimes that will, if you're using CSS, sometimes it'll throw things completely off. Um, so I usually try and make sure that it looks good at different sizes. Because apparently, some people, you know, haven't gotten their eyes updated or whatever. Like I'll probably start needing a very large font size soon. Because um, I'm getting old. <laughs> and the other thing is to be very fast, right? So people want to use their interfaces fast so they can get through it quickly. I don't know if this has been mentioned before, but Google Web Toolkit is completely open source. So that means that on the previous slide you saw that it had support for, um, it had some built-in widgets, you know? Um, right. And a lot of them are carried over from, uh, from so familiar Java libraries that you're familiar with. But you can actually add your own if there's something missing from, from uh, Google Web Toolkit that you would like to see um, used in your own app. You can actually contribute back to the community and, uh, and uh, use your own little, uh, build your own little uh, plugin. Uh, component for the web toolkit. Right. So here's the history we're talking about, adding the history listener to a widget, and then making it really easy to have your back button work. The other thing, localization, that's also a big thing. If you're doing any kind of large web app, uh, and if you want to appeal to anything other than America, you're going to have to work in localization. Um, and it can get kind of annoying. I had to do very ghetto localization when I worked on the, um, the NORAD Santa tracker. Uh, because Santa apparently goes all over the world. So we, we had to translate into like nine different languages, right? So even getting like just five messages translated and working out a good system for that was a little tricky. So it's really good having a good system for localization. Um, so GWT works that in because they understand that large web apps need that. Um, and then separating like the CSS um, from the actual types of widgets. Um, that makes your code a little cleaner as well. And I want to show you a couple demos really quick, just so you can see the kind of UI stuff we have. So same thing, let's go and uh, go to the documentation page. Wait. And docs, samples, kitchen sink. OK, so this is just an example of a lot of the UI stuff they have. So widgets, yay, button, et cetera. Uh, panels, these are really good for those of you that are used to Swing. Um, you'll f like this is really familiar. Horizontal panel, vertical panel, flow panel, et cetera. Text, so they, I actually use this in one of mine. The rich, this rich editor here, that's pretty cool because you don't want to have to rewrite a rich editor from scratch. So there's little things like this they have as well. They actually even have, there's a um, built-in thing that does basically what this thing does here called suggest box. And I've used that as well. So little widgets like that that you really don't want to have to rewrite um, that they provide. And pop-up dialogue, etc. The Google Mashup Editor front end, by the way, was actually written as a good application. So you saw the little tabs on top and everything. Those are all straight from the Google Web Toolkit library. Right. International. I actually have never looked at this uh, demo. See, look at that. <laughs> 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 
crazy languages. Uh, oh, apparently even supports um, local formatting for the numbers. So that's something you probably didn't even think about, right? Date, time formatting. So it's not just the messages. And then we have the messages. Um, so that's pretty sweet, um, having something built in like that. So let's see, here we go. Da, 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 da. Testing, browsers, etc. They've got a huge, these are a list of a bunch of their classes, and there's probably actually a lot more now. Um, the other thing they have now is something that I played with recently, is uh, they added support for some of the Ajax libraries. They kind of wrapped it inside GWT-like code. So here's an example using their Google Maps uh, wrapper. Computer. I don't have it online. All right. So that's it. They built in support for the Maps API and a little bit of support for Gears as well, which we're about to talk about. So that's something you can use our other APIs with GWT. Uh, as Jason mentioned, it is fully open source. There, it does have a huge amount of developers. I went to a conference in San Francisco about it earlier just to talk about the Maps API wrapper, and there were a good amount of people there uh, talking about it. A lot, of, a lot of Java developers, a lot of people interested in making like really well-working web apps. And then, obviously, go to code.google.com, go to the Google Web Toolkit page if you want to find out more. Any questions about that? Yeah. Um, let's say, can you uh, make Java apps inside of it? Right, okay, so I guess I didn't mention, I had a slide earlier that said, uh, GWT not equal to applet. So, you can make, I mean, anything that you can make on a web page, you can make inside of GWT, right? So it actually, like, if you need to, like, insert some just pure JavaScript inside there, they have obviously they have an interface for doing that. Um, so if you can include a Java applet on a web page, you can do that. And it, I think that just uses the object tag, right? So you would just insert an object tag. Yeah, because my my question is like, if let's say you have a Java applet and then you have like some um, HTML JavaScript um, generated by JWT, they yeah. communicate. Um, a Java applet can't natively stuff around it, right? There's no special interaction there. Right. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs>